Hi and welcome to Biostock Studio, where today we are joined via link by Obliva and CEO Ellen Donnelly. Welcome, Ellen. Thanks, Cecilia. So, Ellen, you just announced a 200 million sec financing round. Could you tell us a little bit about the background to this and why it's so important to Obliva? Sure. Thanks, Cecilia. As you know, the market conditions right now are extremely challenging. Not only is the bio sector, biotech sector experiencing the biggest downturn it's had in 20 years, but the number of deals being done isn't a lot. They say that compared to last year, the number of deals in the life science sector are down 95%. Um, so we're just absolutely thrilled to have accomplished this, this impressive financing round, attracting high quality long-term investors story. Um, the capital raise is gonna enable the launch of the start of our phase two, three study for KL133. That's our lead asset and we'll run that to a key interim analysis. Um, we're also gonna support the progression of a second compound, NV354, to get it ready to enter the clinic. I think the progression of both of these assets really sends a strong signal that will strengthen our position as a leading rare disease company. And with our broad portfolio, where we have multiple candidates with pharmacological strategies that are unique, specifically tar targeting mitochondrial disease. Um, I think our ability to deliver this unprecedented financing round, we just raised 200 million sec on a market cap of 150 million sec. At a 10% discount with high quality investors really speaks to the unique value proposition of the company and our strong strategy. So we're very, very happy with round. You did touch on it a bit here, but could you elaborate on uh, how the proceeds will be used? Absolutely. The majority of the financing is going to be used for that lead asset, KO1333. It will be used to fully fund the start of a registrational study with that asset and progress it to the key interim analysis with the first 40 patients uh, due to read out in about late 2023, early 2024. That study has an adaptive element in its design. So the interim analysis is just going to generate information about the probability of success as well as guide the final size of the study to ensure high statistical power to meet the study efficacy endpoint. Once we have that readout, we'll progress into the second stage of our study, um, and then where we can either continue at the planned study size or expand to a predefined cap. So that's pretty exciting. And after the successful readout of the phase 1B last year, we're really excited about this study and the potential here um, as a registrational study. So what that means is if um, the study reads out positive, we have the potential to actually take this drug to the market with that data from the study. So that's a big, a big thing for us. Uh, the remaining capital is going to be used to complete the final activities for NV354 to get it ready to go into the clinic. And then we also have cash runway for the next 24 months for the company. And what about the terms for, for the issue? What are those? <laughs> so the issue is rather complicated and it was a very long press release. So we have a 200 million SEC financing, and that's comprised of both a 150 million directed share issue and a 50 million rights issue, and that's before the issue costs. The subscription price in both the directed share issue and the rights issue is 0.35 aura per share, which corresponds to about a 10% discount compared to our closing price on May 31st. So the total dilution of the issue is announced approximately 58.8% based on the total number of shares in Oliva right after that issue. In the DSI, we're particularly excited to broaden our shareholder base with new global life science and institutional investors. One particularly IP group is a well-known London-based science and technology investor, and they have particular expertise in global biotechnology and industry. So we're excited to welcome them to the team. Um, with regards to the rights issue, the rights issue is 100% covered by underwriting. Um, we're gonna allot one subscription right for every one share held on June 8th. And um, at 11 subscription rights, one title of shareholders subscribe for four new shares in the company. The subscription period for that rights issue is open from June 10th until June 27th. Um, now, the third thing that we announced yesterday was the decision by Hadian Ventures, who is Obliva's largest shareholder, to convert their convertibles of 26 million sec, um, plus the accrued interest into shares. And that was done independently of the directed share issue in which Hadian also participated. So it was an exciting day with lots of details in those press releases. And obviously we'll be, um, we'll be publishing a prospectus to support all this that will be published on June 9th. And now with the financing in place, what are you looking forward to, to uh, accomplishing? Oh, goodness. It's, 
Yes, it's a very exciting time. I think I can speak for the entire team in Oblifa. We're really eager to get this study started so we can test KL-1333 in more patients with PMD. Um, this is what we're all here to do, and it's been hard um, waiting to be able to do that. Um, primary mitochondrial diseases, as you know, they're devastating diseases that greatly limit these patients' quality of life. Um, and these patients have no options for treatment. We really believe that KL-1333 is a mechanism of action is well positioned to help these patients. And we've seen evidence of that in our phase 1B study last year. So that we're hopeful that dosing these patients with double the dose that we had in that phase 1B study for a whole 12 months will really show beneficial effects to these patients. So now that the financing has finally been secured, we can focus on what we love doing, which is developing new novel therapies for these patients with these rare diseases. Well, then we thank you for taking the time to tell us more about this, Ellen. Thanks, Cecilia. Thank you for your time.